Hi guys, and welcome back to another edition of Ranch Talk. It's March 1st. Yeah. Spring is coming eventually, not for a lot of us. Not <laughs> for yet. Some, I don't know, unless you count rain as spring, there's a lot of people getting a lot of rain. Not us. So one really quick thing that we're going to do here is uh, this, this side. Nope. Where is it? I can't see it. The uh, There's that chat bar on here. You know what? We don't need that anymore. So we are going to get rid of that. And now I screwed up the whole thing. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now there's a big black spot. Now there's a big black spot where that was. Let me fix that really quick here. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you guys can't see that yet. There we go. Hey, now we got rid of the bar. The reason we're doing it is because YouTube now has a new feature uh, that they just released this week uh, where when you go back and watch the replay on this, you can actually watch the chat replay also. So we don't have to put that crap on the screen anymore. Yay. Thanks, YouTube. It's always in my way. I always feel like I'm leaning into it or something. Anyway, here we are. We're back here with a, uh, another edition of uh, Ranch Talk. I'm Mike. I'm Aaron, And this is our Wyoming Life, guys. Thanks for joining us uh, this evening. We've had kind of a crazy week around here with the, dealing with the pigs, which we weren't expecting to have to deal with as quick as we were. And a lot of questions and a lot of uh, uh, views on that couple of video series that we put out about that. Um, yeah, I just I checked mean, the Sunday videos have 12,000 views already. Yeah. And so lots of pig popularity. On I the guess channel. lots of pig people. Uh, <laughs> we, we had, uh, you know, we had like zero um, warning about that whole situation. And like I said in the video, uh, we planned on building that ramp and getting the, the trailer up and get the pigs used to going on and off the trailer and feeding them on the trailer. And none of that worked out, which is not surprising because that's kind of how things I seem will to have come. to say, you know, we spent Sunday loading them. And it was, I don't know why, I thought it was going to be quick. I sent the kids up to my mom's house, up to Grammy's house at like 1. Lincoln usually takes a nap at 2. I was like, oh, we'll be done by then. We were not. And by the time we went up to go get the kids, Lincoln had fallen asleep. I mean, it just yeah. <laughs> it turned into like an, and loading the pictures an all-day process. I had slipped on the ice because everything's ice outside. It is. Um, on Saturday. So my right knee hurt from my fall. And then after we loaded the pigs... And we just muscled him into the trailer, pretty much a couple of them. Um, we were both super sore. I can finally walk again without like pain. <laughs> so that's Motrin is our friend. <laughs> that was uh, nice. We had, uh, and then of course you saw us unloading the pigs, so they don't want to get on the trailer, and then they don't want to get off the trailer. Uh, but we did, we did actually learn something probably a little bit too late. Too Earl, late. <laughs> Earl told us about the bucket trick, where you can put a bucket over their head and they try to back out of it. Next year, for sure, I am I am trying yeah. that. In fact, I think when we go back and get the meat and drop off the steers, I'm going to tell Dave, the guy that helped us oh, unload, about, about the bucket trick and let him try it first. So anyway, uh, Chuck, I'm glad you like my shirt. I like my shirt, too. And uh, it's one I've worn it for live streams before, and, and uh, it's one of my favorite shirts. So that's uh, that's the story. There's no, there's no story behind the shirt, really. No. <laughs> I know a lot of cops. That's about, that's about the only story behind the church. Uh, have you ever been to Can Aaron? Have you ever been to Canada? I've been to Canada a few times. Yeah. We. I, I went to I went to college in North Dakota in Grand Forks, and the border was an hour away, and you could drink at eighteen or nineteen, whatever. Right. Eighteen? Is it eighteen? It's been a yeah, while. It was eighteen when I was. When, I don't know when. So I frequented Canada. Yeah, and I, I actually grew up in Montana, just over the border. So. Uh, I went uh, all, well all the time up into uh, into Calgary and Medicine Hat and well Medicine Hat and Calgary and, and, and yeah Edmonton. and when I was a kid my grandma is from Towner North Dakota which is just east of Minot North Dakota and we would go up to the Peace Gardens all the time and oh. there were they're just out, they're over the border of North Dakota right they're yeah they're on the border of Canada and in North Dakota um, the Peace Gardens actually sit right on the border so you can pass back and forth once you're in the garden um, and it's a beautiful beautiful flower garden i haven't been for years when i was a kid they had um a clock and it was all planted in flowers and the the numbers on the clock were different color flowers and they actually had like mechanical hands that went around and i just always oh, wow. remember that it's beautiful i would love to take our kids there that would be cool. sometime so that would be very cool um, one person, and this is something that did get mentioned too about the pigs, was the fact that they didn't want to get off the trailer because of the smell of blood. 
Um, you know, I could kind of see that. But here's the thing. As soon as they got off the trailer, they had no oh, problem walking, walking into the barn. It was that seven-inch drop that really seemed to freak them out. Yeah. And Dave said when he was helping on this load, once they get in, they have no problem moving them through their chute and alley and corral system. Um, because They do smell other animals, and they're curious about that. It's not the, the smell of blood or anything. It's There's a lot of other animals that come through there. So. Right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something I'm very glad we only do once a year, for sure. I mean, we're going to be better next year. We always say that too. And this is actually our <laughs> third year doing pigs. It's our third or fourth. We can't remember. <laughs> I think it's third. Uh, the first year actually went off without a hitch, which is just insane because we didn't. Mm. And that's what we couldn't get them on the trailer. I remember we had loose pigs. We had pigs. Oh, we did have pigs that escaped that year. <laughs> yeah, we did have pigs run around. And it was like 15 below. It was so cold that year. And But the pigs, they, they, they did wander off. They got out. And, but they came right back because yeah. they knew where they were supposed to be. So they went, they wanted back in their pen. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, pigs, crazy. What else? Uh, hey, Harvey, North Dakota. I've been there. Have you really? Yeah. <laughs> How big is Harvey, North Dakota? Tiny. Ben is from Harvey, North Dakota. <laughs> uh, tiny? Yeah. You have friends all over North Dakota. Well, you have family all over North yeah, Dakota. Yeah, family all over North Dakota. You have family in, in Roy? Is that what it Ray. is? Ray. Ray. Ray, North Dakota. Um, Williston, obviously. Yeah. Um, I have... My very good friend from college lives in Bismarck. She's a lawyer there. Um, and then, like, the Minot Town or Rugby area. Tons and tons of family up there. Mm -hmm. And friends from college. Right. So. Um, our live streams are a little bit different, obviously, uh, than what we put out, uh, you know, most of the time. And so one interesting thing that we're doing this week is we're actually, not, not only are we filming the live stream, we're actually filming the live stream. Um, filming the filming. Filming the filming of the live stream. Uh, there's another couple cameras set up and what we're going to do uh, is this weekend's video that comes out on Sunday uh, will actually feature part of this live stream, which might be kind of cool to see like a behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, thing. Not that there's a lot behind the scenes because the kids leave, so that takes care of 95% of the chaos. I'd say, no, maybe 75, because then we have a dog that's another 15%. Well, she leaves. She leaves the too. dog goes to Grammy's house. Cats get put away. Uh, yeah. So one thing we need to touch on really quick is the peacock, because I'm sure there's people out there that want to know questions. how the peacock is doing. Uh, how is the peacock? He's good. He is. He's still living in the basement of the shop. Um, kind of funny. His his girlfriend has come around, and there's actually windows, obviously, in the oh, basement. Is she looking? She comes around, and she looks in the window. I keep on threatening to just grab her and take her in there and let him visit for a while. Conjugal visit. Conjugal visit, yeah. Um, he's doing really well. He's Right now, he doesn't have his leg on. We, we leave it on for a little while. We take it off for a day or so just to make sure that um, there's no rubbing or anything like that going on, so we want to... And we got new straps. And we got new straps for it that we still need to put on, so... He's actually doing pretty good. He's he's hanging out doing his peacock thing. Uh, I'm sure he's kind of lonely. Uh, we go down and see him a few times a day. We could put a chicken in with him. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. Oh, my phone just thing. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing checking your phone? Uh, oh my gosh. Anyway, oh, so I have to I have to put together. I'm teaching the vegetable master gardener class to the trainees. I have to put together my slideshow. That's next week. <laughs> oh, fun, fun, fun. Um, so yeah, we're gonna basically our, our live streams. We you know we we talk about what's going on on the ranch, but we also want to take questions from you. Obviously, there's a lot of questions as you, as you guys can tell. Um, we're gonna try to get to as many of them as we can. We usually run about an hour. Sometimes a little bit longer. If you really, really want a question answered and we keep glossing over it, we sincerely apologize. As you guys can see, there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, you can super chat us and that pops up and gives us a big warning and lights on the screen and we will make sure that we answer the super chats. Exactly. I should have, you know what I should have is like a notebook and a piece of paper so I can write down questions because I see questions and then one of us is flapping our gums no. and then I forget about it and then I need, you know, then I, then I need to come back. So um lots of uh franco i'm not gonna say your last name um any plans for sheep or goat farming we've had a lot, we of, had sheep, a lot of sheep sheep questions, questions this week so we, we just answer that we uh we did have sheep at one point when we first came here and gilbert was still alive and showing us the ropes kind of um we did have sheep gilbert loved sheep he loved he loved baby sheep. he loved the lambs the the newborns he loved watching them he loved, well you know so that was why we had sheep um we had sheep for what three or three years we came in 2008 gilbert passed away in 2012 we sold the sheep in 2012. yeah the sheep uh <laughs> one of the problems that we had with sheep was actually finding shears in this area um to to come and shear the sheep was really hard i think the last year we did it we paid almost it was like 12 dollars a head 
to, yeah. to get a shearer here, which is, you know. We uh, had such a small herd. And it, it, was it wasn't small. worth their time, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they want to come and shear several hundred or thousand sheep. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, it, it just did. It, it, it was just a giant. And we thing. were still learning how to deal with cows. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I got to figure out this cow thing before I figure out the sheep thing. So. Um, the new greenhouse, the new the new high tunnel is on the way. Aaron got a shipping notification, what, today or yesterday um, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, at the beginning of this week, I, got, um, I ordered it from Farm Tech um, just a little over a week ago, and I had expected it to take a lot longer. Um, sometimes it can take up to a month for them to, to actually ship it, and then, you know, shipping time. Um, and I think I called about a week and a half ago, and it shipped within just a few days. Mm -hmm. And I checked the tracking today. I was going to check it right before the live stream, and I didn't get a chance. Um, it was supposed to be in Billings today. It's supposed to be delivered tomorrow. Whether or not we'll get it tomorrow, or it'll be Saturday or Monday, I don't know. Right. But it says delivered tomorrow. So. Yeah, and that's and it's going to obviously it comes in, in five hundred pieces. And it's a semi that brings the darn thing. So then I have to find somewhere to store it until we can actually build it. Um, ground is frozen right now. We have to bring in some more dirt. We're building up a pad for it. Um, it's covered in snow. There's, you know, a few obstacles to get over. But that would just, uh, if we didn't have stuff to figure out, it wouldn't be like And there's also so. like a foot of snow on top of where the tunnel is going to go right, right. now. Right, so yeah, it's really snow hard, covered. Hard, hard to do. Yeah. Hard work right now. Exactly. Hey, Blake is here from Guy in Wyoming. Hey, Blake and Ron is here. Blake and uh, and Ron are going to be our moderators tonight. They're just making sure that everything goes smooth. You guys don't have to see anything you don't want to. So we always thank those guys for coming in and and uh, hanging out. And and if uh, if they have any if you have any questions that they can answer, they'll they'll answer them for you. And as well as anybody, if anybody has any sees a question that they know the answer to, feel free to throw that answer out there. Because like I said, we're not going to be able to get to everything. Speaking of which. Back a little ways ago, somebody asked about the foreclosure pending sign. Um, I think she was asking for her husband. I missed your name. I'm sorry. But um, the foreclosure pending sign hangs in the shop. And when you were in I college? had just came back from college and yeah. didn't work the first summer. I just tooled around the ranch with uh, my mom and Gilbert. And uh, Gilbert liked to hang the foreclosure sign because he liked to pretend that he was poor. <laughs> Um, he liked to play the poor Wyoming rancher, uh -huh. and um, so he ha he had this really old foreclosure pending sign that actually I think broke or was about to break, and that was his joke because he he had three ranches at the time. He would move it around um, just to get a rise out of people. He he loved that, and so I just I painted him a new one, and we he hung it for a while, and kind of, it, he kind of quit doing it. It hasn't been out on the, I mean, he'd put it on the highway. Yeah, he would, <laughs> yeah. He would put it right there. I don't remember where I found it because I'm the one that put it on the wall. I was totally just laying I don't remember where I found it. And then. The sh it, remember when we first came and the shop was a disaster? Oh, the shop. You could, when we first <laughs> came here, you could make, you could park a tractor in the shop, but that was mm -hmm. it. Like you could pick you, the Gilbert's Gator, the little gator, and a tractor, a tractor was all that and fit that in the it. shop. Now I can fit probably three or four tractors in the shop if I really, really try to squeeze stuff in. But um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, we fit, when it, when it threatens to hail, we'll put tractors, gator, truck, um, all kinds of stuff we can shove in there. We right. can do it strategically. Yeah, so. it's it's like playing Tetris, but you can do it. So that's the story uh, behind the foreclosure pending sign. It's actually become more of a um, you know a reminder to us that you know because there there originally when we first came here there was three ranches and now we're down to one. And it's a very, very uh, poignant reminder to us that, you know, things can slip away fast if you're not careful. So, And no, it wasn't a bad reason why there were down to one ranch. It was a very conscious decision to consolidate. Um, the coal mine had bought one ranch, like, back in the 80s. Right. Um, the other ranch um, was 30 miles away. It was hard for us to manage both ranches. So just a change in business plan is why we only have one right. ranch now. Yeah, going 30 miles in between ranches was kind of a pain. We had cows at both ranches. We had a hired man at the other, other ranch, which barely paid for him. And it was, it was kind of a goofy deal. So, yeah, getting moving... Consolidating down to one actually worked out pretty well. For okay. So I saw a question and I, I missed the name. Um, it was what um, what high tunnel from Farm Tech and it's the premium round high tunnel is what um, what our existing high tunnel is and I just got the same one again. Um, so they'll they're same dimensions, thirty by seventy two. So they'll look nice next to each other. Yeah, it's going right next to it. So thirty feet apart. Start okay. an empire. An empire. Like a green empire. 
Yes. Yeah. That's the plan. <laughs> so, are your kids in 4-H? Um, not yet. That's from uh, Case Farmer. Uh, not yet. They Kenzie has to be how eight? Seven or eight, but by January first, and her yeah, so, her birthday is January twentieth, so she misses the deadline. And I can't remember if it's seven or eight. Somebody probably knows. Um, so yeah, but we do clover buds, the like little kids for H on occasion. We do their fun activities, and yeah, I think we'll be in four H when the time comes. So mm -hmm. I don't know how we'll juggle four H, but Grace really wants a house rabbit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and she wants a sheep too. Just sheep. one, just one sheep. I didn't hear the sheep thing. I didn't know I, that's new. <laughs> she, um, she asked the other day. Didn't you remember? I told her to go ask you. She didn't come and ask me about a sheep. She wants she, a house rabbit. She does want a house rabbit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, somebody, uh, Betty asked about uh, your mom and how much she helps out with farmer's market and that kind of stuff. Um, so she used to help me all the time, um, kind of before we had three kids. Um, when we started going to market, I was pregnant with Mackenzie, our oldest, and so mom very much helped me in the gardens, helped me take care of the gardens, helped me weed the gardens, um, and as we've had three kids, it's kind of just easier for her to watch the kids, and I go work. But she helps me wash um, during market season. We wash every Thursday, um, so Mike and I will go out and pick and harvest everything and take it back to the shop, and my mom will help me wash and package, and then she watches the, she helps me bake on Fridays. Um, she's like my sous chef. She preps all my stuff and helps me and does dishes and entertains the kids. And then Saturdays, she used to come to market with me. Mike actually used to stay home with the kids. Mm -hmm. And my mom and I would go to market. Um, and then as we kind of, as the meat evolved and we just like produce just got heavier and heavier because we had more and more of it. Um, Mike comes to market just because it's, it's very physically demanding actually the whole market day um and so mike comes to market now when mom stays with kids and she brings the kids in and they hang out with us for a while and then they go get mcdonald's <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. like totally their saturday yeah. you got, <laughs> they've got all these vegetables and good healthy stuff then they go to mcdonald's but hey they like, they're kids yeah, what, they're what kids. do you expect so, um somebody a while ago asked about her and we're kind of skipping all over the place and i yeah. apologize for that um but that's what happens when you're answering questions because obviously you guys skip all over the place. So we're skipping all over the place with you. Um, somebody asked uh, what kind of pigs we had and they are, and this came from the lady that, uh, that we got them from in Nebraska uh, who does our breeding for us. They're three quarter Berkshire pigs. I don't know what the other quarter is. It could be. Wasn't it York or something? I don't know. I have no you're idea. You're not but... really well versed in pig language. No, and these, and these pigs were a different breed than what we usually have because they're a lot longer, if you they're notice. They're like long really body. long, skinny pigs. Well, not skinny. Yeah. I mean, they weigh 300 pounds, but they're long. The, the pigs that we've had before have been more scrunched up and, you know, mm -hmm. like, and fatter. Yeah. Or they look fatter anyway. I think these so. pigs will be great, though. I'm excited to get, get it back and try some bacon. That's always the first thing. Bacon. <laughs> And pork chops. <laughs> yeah, pork chops go well. I mean, and you know, a lot of people asked us about with the pigs, um, you know, how do we get it back? And, and actually, the, the the processing place that we take them to, it's USDA inspected. So everything gets inspected by, by an inspector. There's also a vet there um, who inspects the pigs before they're slaughtered. And uh, there was some other guy, too. There's three inspectors. I can't remember who the other one was. Um, he did we have, something else. We have footage. We filmed it. Yeah, Aaron did film it. Um, we, uh, they'll actually, uh, they cut it how we want it. We tell them we want three quarter inch pork chops or one, one inch. inch pork chops or two inch pork chops. They'll cut it to that. They freezer, they uh, vacuum, pack. vacuum pack it and they price it for us and weigh it and all yeah. that good stuff. So they cure the bacon, they cure the ham. And I, we have to do this in order to sell it retail. Um, yeah. So we can't, I can't process you know, we've had a lot of questions about like, if we, why don't we butcher? Or why don't we cut, you know, do we get it just back and then we cut it up and package and stuff? No, to, to sell at farmer's market and to sell individual cuts of meat, it all has to be USDA inspected and, and a hundred percent of the processing has to be done in an approved facility. Um, Wyoming does have a state inspected meat program. Um, so there are certain slaughterhouses in Wyoming that can do it. Um, there's a lot that cannot, they, you if you've ever gotten any meat processed, a lot of times it'll say not for resale, not for resale or not for sale or um, something along that lines. Um, those places are not inspected to the level to be able to resell it. 
you know, one pork chop or steak at a time. So by doing a USDA facility, we can sell across state lines if we so choose. Um, and you get that guarantee of that health inspector. That health inspector is there five days a week at the USDA facility. Um, and they, uh, Roger was explaining it all to us. Is, you know, he, they check all the glands, all the stuff in the neck. And then if there's any problems, they check kidneys and they check liver. And we've never had any problems. We've never failed a health check or anything. Um, but it's nice to have that assurance. Yeah, it's so. very good. There was a question that I told you. Now, I was, I, the whole time you were talking, I was like, I'm going to keep this in my head. <laughs> and now it's gone. I'm going to scroll up. This always screws us up. But I'm going to scroll up here a little bit in the questions and see if I can find it, which I can't. Um, There's a truffle lot. Truffle farming. I, I, do we have truffles here? I doubt it. Um, Don't you need a lot of... I don't know anything about truffles, but you need, I think you need a lot of humidity and trees. Don't they grow at the bottom of trees? Truffles? Yeah. I don't know. I, I honestly don't even know if I've ever had a truffle. I've never I, I couldn't a afford truffle. a truffle no, if yeah, I wanted one. <laughs> but uh, uh, would you guys... I've had some truffle fries with truffle oil and Parmesan cheese on them. They were good. <laughs> would you guys ever can do uh, consider doing a meet and greet uh, if the time arose from William? Um, I don't know. We meet and greet people all the time. It's kind of a... <laughs> Uh, a we had a thing. couple instances this week of, hey, we love your channel. We yeah, we did videos. have a couple of those come Nice up. to meet you. We love your channel. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we talk about doing like a farm day or something. I wouldn't say it's going to happen this summer. You know, there's there's a logistical thing to it, too. I mean, who knows how many people are going to show up and then you got to park somewhere and, mm -hmm. you know, and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it may be something that we do in the future. I honestly don't know. Um, we're kind of going day by day at this point, really, with this whole YouTube thing. Yeah, I would thing. say we don't have any plans right now, but, you know, maybe not this summer, but maybe 2019 we'll do a farm day. Thank you, Chuck. That's what it was. The Jerky yeah. Project. Oh. That's what it was. Thank so you, Chuck. we take steers next, well, on March 14th, we take um, the first batch of steers over, and that is when our first batch of jerky will be processed. We found out some very interesting things about jerky when we were over talking to Roger. Um, per cow, he figured we could get 40 pounds of jerky, raw, raw meat. jerky, raw meat from each cow that would be turned into jerky. So that comes, that then they take that, they divide it in half or maybe it's two thirds or something like that. So we figured it out and we figured that for jerky, I think between all the steers that we have this year, we would end up with like 500 pounds of jerky or something like that. No, no, not quite that much. No, not that much. <laughs> no, it wasn't even that much. I think it was 500 pounds like raw. And then, no, then when they draw it. We have nine, we have 12 animals. Okay. Well, the math is not my... Not my forte, but <laughs> we're gonna have jerky soon. We are gonna have the jerky. Moral of the story. They are gonna do three different kinds of jerky for us. We're gonna have original jerky, uh, pepper jack, and no, peppered, peppered, and teriyaki. <laughs> yes. Having a rough day. Man. And it'll be vacuum packed, and yeah, we'll get it back, and we'll we'll we will set uh, up a store, and we will ship it out. Exactly. I uh, was on the phone today with. Uh, uh, marketing guy from New York City, oddly enough, um, about setting up the store and kind of getting that stuff going online. So um, it's always it's always something. I don't know. We'll see uh, how how quickly it happens. But once we um, once we take the steers over, we're actually doing four or five first, and then we'll we're keeping back a couple to to get them a little bit bigger, and then we'll bring them and manage freezer space. We got to sell some and meat freezer space before yeah. we can put more meat in the freezer. Um, okay, here are a couple questions. Random stuff. Do you have an Instagram? Yes, it's our Wyoming Life. Everything is our Wyoming Life, <laughs> uh, except for our email for some weird reason. That's our oh, our. So I talked to I talked you to Mackenzie. Probably just, okay, go okay, ahead. I talked to Mackenzie's teacher, you yeah. know, and Mrs. Smart, and uh, I felt bad because I always say our Wyoming Life, so like the letter R. Yeah. And she's a teacher, so I was like our <laughs> Wyoming Life. So anyway, that's where that. What comes time from. is it? Um, okay. Uh, when do you, Aaron, when do you start your seedlings? Do you start them indoors from Jordan Barker? Um, I have, yeah, I've done a video um, about a month ago about starting lettuce, broccoli, kale, um, cauliflower. It's in the basement. It's ready to go out to the high tunnel for spring gardening. Um, mm -hmm. Normally, I would have peppers and tomatoes started by now because our target date for planting in the high tunnel would be April 15th-ish. Um, with the construction of the new high tunnel, we are pushed back. Um, cause the, the new high tunnel is going to be where the tomatoes and stuff go. Um, so I will probably here in like two weeks, I will get tomatoes and peppers started for a target date of May 15th. Right. Um, and so, the and next... I might even actually 
I might start my tomatoes just even a couple, I might start the tomatoes the first of April because I actually am going to try and do smaller tomato seedlings. Last year they were like this, they like were 12 to 18 yeah. inches, they're just too tall. Um, I'm going to shoot for like nine inch tomato mm. seedlings this year. So I'm thinking first of April, I'll probably start peppers um, March 15th. Right. And yes, all in the basement. I use fluorescent daylight bulbs. Um, just from the local hardware store and my kids are all wired up. They're on timers um, And I did a video last year too about the tomatoes and peppers and stuff So if you look back um, if you sort our video list by date Go kind of back to the beginning and you can find those videos and I'll do new ones again, too, right? right. So the next step um, Gardening wise is in the tunnel. We have to get the tunnel ready for all this lettuce that's down in the basement um, To go out and we're talking about flaming the tunnel. Yeah, we're gonna then... do some weed control um, I had planted some carrots and stuff in the fall and I was super late on that because we had to pull tomatoes out and they just didn't do super great. The spinach did really good. Radishes did really good until it got really cold. Um, so we're going to go in and flame weed. Um, I do have some aphids, so we're going to spray some natural chemical for aphids, flame it, um, hoe it, and then replant. Mm -hmm. So that's going to probably, I'm going to work on it, I think on Saturday. Right. So we'll film. A um, couple quick uh, quick ones. We are, our trailer is a Hillsboro trailer or aluminum one. I don't know what our steel one is. Featherlight? Featherlight, you're right. Yeah, the steel. It, that's funny because the steel trailer is a lot heavier than the aluminum trailer. It's a Featherlight. And then we have the Hillsboro trail. Um, no, we don't milk our cows. Our cows are all beef cows, so we don't have to get up at 4 a.m. to milk cows. Um, <laughs> but that was something we were going to try to get Blake to do um, just to see if he would do it. But now that, that, that cat's out of the bag, so Blake, he got out of that one. Um, low idle on the gator is actually fixed. I ran a bunch of sea foam through it. I also cleaned off the O2 sensor and it kind of seemed to straighten itself it out. Better. So it, it is working a little bit better. Could have had some bad fuel too, for all I know. But yeah. uh, the whole thing kind of did We have those itself. warm and cold days. Maybe it's some compensation. Yeah. Right? yeah. The gator is getting, I mean, the gator's not old, but it's, it's, it's starting to have its few issues. Um, how, uh, chickens, Aaron, what chickens did you order? What breeds? That's from Ryan down at Humphrey um, Family Holsteins who just got all their chickens. And actually he's texted me today and said they ordered more because they wanted, they, I think he said they got 15. They ordered more. I ordered 60. Um, white Leghorns, Buff Orpingtons, um, Silver Laced Wayandots, a Golden Wayandot, there's some other kind of Wayandot, and Cherry Eggers. Yeah, we like the Wayne and Dots and the different yeah, variety of them. I like the Wayne and Dots. Um, and I like white leghorns. They die. They're like the first to die. It's horrible to say, but they... Yeah, but they lay like crazy. <laughs> they That's lay, why, yeah, there's So everything I ordered is super heavy egg layers. I think leghorns are 280 to 300 eggs per year. All the Wayne and Dots and like the cherry eggers are like 230 eggs a year. Um, some Like we have some of the Easter eggers, um, the ones that lay the green eggs, and they're like way less, like 180 eggs a year. So we ordered everything for production this year, um, and we ordered eight ducks. Um, I got four of the runner ducks that stand upright instead of flat, yeah, <laughs> and I got flat. some Cayuga ducks and a black and white one. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, so. Random stuff out there. Uh, they paid, a, paid you a compliment earlier that said that through your videos, they become more interested in farmers markets and stuff oh, like that. Awesome. So they're actually looking. That was random stuff. But they just asked this question about doing a video about um, fan mail, which <laughs> oddly enough, we get a lot of. I, I think that's very weird that we do, but we do. Um, I probably answer 10, 15 emails a day. Um, and the comments obviously keep on rolling. And one person, one, one person said, we well, don't get that many comments, um, you know, a few days after you put out a video, but you don't think about it. We still have 160 videos out there that are still getting comments. Yeah. So comments are always rolling in. We're always trying to answer those. Um, the emails are usually a little bit more involved. They're not just like, Hey, look what you're doing. They're like, you know, they're this, lot, you know, yeah, some of them are books, of questions lots of and questions that we try to get through all those. Um, but when we talk about, uh, talk about doing a fan mail video one of the things that we thought that we figured we would do now i'm a huge fan of casey neistat and if you don't watch casey he's a really good youtuber and he does a thing that he calls mail what is it called mail, mail time mail time um where he takes mail from viewers and uh opens it and, and so we're gonna steal that so we're gonna totally steal that idea we're gonna call it something different um obviously what are we gonna call it i don't know i, I in the newsletter you called it something i i asked people to give me suggestions on what it should be called and I didn't get any ideas. <laughs> you so. called it something on Facebook. 
What do they call it on Facebook? Um, well, let me look. Mailbox, here. mail something. Uh, so Mailbag. The mailbag, yeah. I mean, it was, you know, Aaron wanted to call it snail mail. At first, she wanted to call it old people mail. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so I had to say that thing with the stamps. You can send stuff to us. Uh, our address, it's our Wyoming Life, P.O. Box 667, Gillette, Wyoming, 82718. That's actually no, it's 82717. 82717, that's the post office box. It's on our website. It's on the website. It's usually down in the description. So um, to be per to be perfectly honest, and uh, we do open these ahead of time, most of the time. we um, got to check for anthrax. Well. We, yeah, we want to make sure that we do get some weird stuff. Um, people. We love us. what you guys send, though. Like it, It's always a surprise. We don't get a ton of stuff in the P.O. box. We haven't had the P.O. box for that long. Um, Grace and I went checked it today, and she's like, why don't we ever get anything? So yeah. when we do get stuff, it's super exciting. And that's so, why we wanted to do this, because yeah. uh, it is exciting for us to... Uh, so please send us snail mail. We love it. We love snail mail. Well, you know, and it's got, you know, it's got your handwriting on it. We get that. It's we got get, your address. It's got your text. address. <laughs> so you don't have to put that on there. But uh, so uh, Tammy and David, uh, that you've actually seen them. If you um, subscribe to our newsletter, you can go to our website, subscribe to that newsletter. You can get that every Monday, um, kind of giving you an update on what's going on, a few other things. And we had a picture of them. They actually purchased our Wyoming Life t-shirts from Amazon.com and sent us a picture of them wearing their t-shirts. We put them in the newsletter. So now they shared other stuff. Now they send us all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I won't read the whole letter, but, uh, you know, um, here's a few recipes from our family. So they sent Aaron some recipes. Um, of some different stuff. I like I'm gonna the, drop it. Yeah. Um, the chicken casserole I thought was amazing. Chicken broccoli casserole. Um, super excited about that. Cincinnati chili, which I've never had Cincinnati chili. It has cinnamon and cloves in it. I don't put cinnamon and cloves in my chili, so I think we will have to try that out. Is that I've heard of that, and it sounds interesting and good. And a sweet potato casserole. I love sweet potatoes. There's so. another one too. Oh, here it is. Uh, beer can chicken. I think I've heard of this, where you, where you take yeah, a chicken and you put it over a beer can or something. I've never made that. So none of these are ever anything that I've ever really made. I have made, you know, I've made chicken casserole, but not this particular chicken casserole. So um, I think we will try some of these out. Um, and Tammy is a nurse. Um, she's a pediatric nurse at a trauma center. Um, and she's, and I think I'm right on that one. She sent us these. These are Tot Finder stickers that go on... Um, your kids windows yeah so, so that if you have something happen a uh, fire or something fire, and I was super excited fire. about this um I don't know why we don't have these but um, I remember those from when I was a kid yeah so those are a little bit I mean it wasn't the same thing I don't think it was Todd finder but you guys might remember there was like a sticker and mm -hmm. different windows and stuff like that so so yeah I'm super excited for these and they come with instructions on the back of where to put them and mm -hmm. I think we will definitely I hope the house never catches on fire but if it does Please save our kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you, uh, Tammy and David, yes. uh, for that. We do have another one that we're going to do a little bit later. This is a bigger box. Um, I actually know what's in here because they sent me an email, but I'm not sure if Aaron does. So I know what he does. Do you? Okay. It's kind of obvious when you look and see who it's from. It's funny, though. It's got a, it's a funny story. So we're going to hang on to that one for a little bit. It's not from a fan. It's not from a fan, but it's funny because they're trying to persuade us. <laughs> Um, how many eggs do you normally get a day in the winter? Not Cody? right now. <laughs> it's like horrible. It is. Um, we don't have, what do we have? Like 20 chickens or something right now. So we're 25, 25, I think right now. How many eggs are we getting a day? Nine. Nine, 10 eggs a day, which isn't horrible for winter time. They go through, you know, as what really screws them up is when it gets warm. And then it gets cold again because then they just kind of start. Yeah, and they, now they get all sporadic. Everything on the ranch is just better right now. Like the the spinach is doing better. The chickens are gonna start doing better. The long once we hit ten hour days in February, like things just perk up. So yeah, yeah we'll start getting more eggs. We don't have enough eggs for farmers market right now. I we eat the eggs that we do get. And we have a few. We have a couple customers that come out and get eggs. Yeah. Um, but you know, another thing that'll screw up egg production is a fox. Yeah. Um, in a second, we get every once in a while, about a few, few uh, two or three times a year, we'll end up with a fox that'll get in with the with the chickens, and they they shut down and yeah. they don't do anything for weeks afterwards. So, um, yeah. Oh, and the, the other question too that I wanted to come back to was the sales barn question. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about the, the the shop, and attached to the shop is the sales barn, and then behind that is the barn. Um, the sales barn back in the day was actually a, it was an auction house. They the 
the folks that ran this ranch uh, before we came here, well, before Gilbert bought it in um, back in the 90s, uh, they had auctions here. That sales barn where you see my tractors and stuff parked now um, was full of bleachers and there was a sales ring. They would bring up uh, uh, mostly bulls. They, they mostly sold uh, Hereford bulls and they would uh, bring them up and sell them and, and kick them out. So mm -hmm. that's why we call it sales barn. It is not any any type of sales barn now. It's just pretty much storage and cats live there. Yeah, the cats. Lots live there. of cats, so yeah. Um, do you have a light on the timer for the chickens? Um, Holler Haven Farms. Um, we used to do that. It's not plugged in right now. No, um, and we actually... Um, and I would say it helped. I, I don't, I, we just kind of gave up. We do. I mean, there, there's electricity at the chicken house. I built that chicken house in 2009. Um, we, you know, we wired it up for, actually, originally when I wired it up, the, the entire chicken house had an extension cord and you plugged it in. Uh, I have a friend of mine that's an electrician that came out and had a heart attack when he saw it. So he actually helped me wire it up correctly. And then he actually helped me put a heater in, which is nice. We have a, a, yeah. a small heater in there. It actually hangs from the rafters and, and keeps it above freezing in there. Um, so we don't have to mess around with the heat lamps because the heat lamps actually caught the chicken house on fire. Remember that? Yeah, we and fire. Uh, we, burned down the, we burned down part of the chicken house. Um, I don't even remember what year well, that was. Well, we didn't was. really burn it down. You put a hole in the floor and some Yeah, the siding floor burned up, towards. siding. And, they, and actually, I think the fire department did more damage than the fire did. They, they ripped off siding. They punched holes in the walls. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, we don't have any type of uh, heat lamps or anything like that. There is there is overhead lighting in there that I can kick on, but they're pretty good about uh, as soon as it gets dark, man, they, they're inside. Yeah. And the ducks and the geese, you can actually holler at and tell them to go to bed and they will, they'll go, they'll go to bed. Um, living life on a farm, they've asked, they've asked us several times, sorry we haven't gotten to it, please answer, are your girls going to show cows? They're going to show whatever they want to show. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, um, they're going to start small. Yeah, I, I don't know how old you have to be to show cows, you know, because we're not in the 4-H world yet. But yeah, if they want to show cows, they'll show cows. Mm -hmm. um, if they want to do arts and crafts and cake decorating at 4-H, that's what they'll do. Yeah. So. Uh, in the coffee cup, somebody asked, is uh, coffee and Bailey's? Irish cream. I had some too. Was I good. have been drinking coffee since like 4.30 this morning. I, I, <laughs> I, I've made cup, pot after pot after pot of coffee. Usually I don't. Usually I have one cup of coffee in the morning. I'm pretty good. It's been a rough day. It's been a long one. Um, here, Lorianne, will you eat the duck eggs or process the ducks for meat? Um, we occasionally collect duck eggs and sell them at market. Um, some people buy them for baking. Yeah, and we don't do it on a super regular basis. Um, but we don't eat the ducks. I just like them. So they just hang out. We have a pond back between the gardens and the chicken house. You know, we have this weird thing going on where we have we have ducks and chickens that we don't eat. We have pigs that we do and cows that we do. I know. <laughs> so there's like this weird line that if, if Aaron really <laughs> likes them, nah, they're off limits. And so we talk about like when we loaded up the pigs and by the time we were done loading and unloading the pigs, it was, it was kind of like, see you later. I mean, uh, we were uh, happy to be done. Um, you feel bad about it, but you know, as the, as the days go on and, and the bruises and yeah. the, I still have a dent in my boot. Maybe, yeah. I need to figure out how to get out. Um, I had a pig that stood on my boot and I scrunched my toes back so he didn't stand on my toes, but he put a literal, like a golf ball sized dent in my boot that I got to try to figure out. So it'll be, uh, you know, it's just one of those things we get, uh, you know, we get some animals that, that are permanent fixtures and some that aren't. So. Yeah, the birds were kind of my first foray into into animals on the ranch. Um, True. You know, as chickens are the gateway animal um, on a ranch. And, yeah, I just like them. I, I, I like to listen to them quack, and I, we fill up this little pond, and I like to watch them swim. And Gilbert always got a big kick out of it, too. Mm -hmm. And um, we use the manure in the garden. So, I mean, they do benefit us in that way. Right. Um, and, yeah, we occasionally collect eggs and sell them. And, yeah, so, that no, they're, they're not profitable for us at all, but... Yeah. And the kids like them and stuff too. So um, we have one duck here on the ranch still, and we have five geese. Yeah, and the geese have been here for a long time. Yeah, um, I think three of the geese have been here since 2009. Oh, speaking so. of geese, uh, I noticed out in the pasture today, Canadian geese. Oh, are good. Back. They're back. So spring, uh, spring. They kind of they kind of give us the the little bit of. Uh, I saw one. I saw, remember it was snow. Last weekend we had a horrible. Was it last weekend we had a horrible blizzard? Yeah. yeah. Two weekends ago or something. Whatever. I ran to town to buy groceries um, in the snowstorm, and I saw one poor Canadian goose all by himself flying in the like, blizzard. And I was I? like, "Oh, you lost your friends, and you're too early." <laughs> oh. Um, oh, that's funny. Our our peach and 
starfruit tree love the fertilizer? Any suggestion on how to keep the dogs out of it? They keep digging up the trees after we feed them. I'm guessing they're talking about your, your emulsion fertilizer. The, um, yeah, if you're, uh, Christy Donahan, um, yeah, if, you, if you're using manure or any like fish emulsion, um, yeah, animals are going to get into it. Raccoons can get into it. Um, they're going to dig in it. Skunks, I think, even will dig in it. Um, I use bone meal in the tomatoes um, in the tunnel, and I've had tomatoes pulled out because um, they'll go after the bone meal. I know with like the fish emulsion and stuff, I think if you let it like sit out and like aerate or something, or if you fertilize in the morning and then like go water at nighttime kind of to wash it away, oh, that might get help. It to go down and deeper. Um, if you're using manure, um, if it's like well composted. It should lose that animal smell and you know smell like dirt. So right. that's my my advice. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, um, what other questions? Well, let's talk about something that happened. What like part of your day today was you were gone, um, and you guys will see this in this weekend's video. But this morning, Erin um, split. She had a meeting today with the state coordinator for sensible nutrition. Sensible nutrition. And and so. Our farmer's market um, has a few programs that we do that um, we work in conjunction with our Council of Community Services, which runs our local food bank and soup kitchen, the council does. Um, so we have a couple programs that we do with them and we're launching a new program this summer. Um, we also, Sensible Nutrition is funded um, as part of, it's grant funded um, through Extension and Sensible Nutrition provides cooking um, education and budgeting and grocery shopping and stuff to um, low-income families and to a certain percentage above low income um, to help people learn how to use fresh ingredients and cook with whole foods and stuff. And Beth from Sensible Nutrition did cooking demos for us at Farmer's Market last year. She's doing one at our March market and she's going to do cooking demos again this summer. But through sens with Sensible Nutrition, our Farmer's Market, um, the Council of Community Services, we met with the state coordinator for Sensible Nutrition and her boss. Um, we are launching a free little pantry program this summer. Um, we, the newspaper donated old newspaper receptacles. Um, we're going to stock it with shelf stable items and a few donations from farmer's market um, and to provide people who don't necessarily meet the qualifications to qualify for the council and for food pantry items, but they still are in a food insecure household. Um, so free little pantry program. We have two locations approved from the city um, to go in city parks. And so we met with them. Um, the director of Sensible Nutrition, our assistant director, I believe, um, she's doing her thesis. And so she's going to use us for research. Um, and we talked about a, other, a lot of other really cool programs that we want to do um, to help food insecurity. Our market is really big on helping with food insecurity. Partnering with growers like myself that sometimes have an excessive amount of produce and getting it into hands of people that need food. Um, I see a question just popped up. Do you have EBT cards at your farmer's market? Yes, we do. We accept SNAP. Um, we also have a SNAP incentive. Um, SNAP is EBT or food stamps. Um, it's a supplemental nutrition assistance program and we match up to $20. So if they come and spend $20 on their SNAP card, our, the market self funds and fundraises for up to a $20 match. Um, we also have a share the harvest program, um, which is if I have excess produce, I can donate it and we take baked goods, canned goods, meat, any of that kind of stuff. And we collect it after market. And then on Mondays, it goes to the council and it's distributed as part of their um, weekly pickup. And we fundraise this year at the market did. Um, I help market manage. <laughs> so uh, we fundraise to help pay producers a small percentage so some of their costs can be covered so that we can hopefully get increased participation in the Share the Harvest program. But last year we did $1,200 of donations that went directly to the Council of Community Services. So the free little pantry program that we're gonna launch this summer is just kind of a continuation of that program. Yeah, so. I mean, it's very good. We, you know, we firmly believe in giving back to our community. We feel very lucky to be in the situation that we're in. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I had a comment uh, a few days ago where somebody said uh, that you, you left a career in broadcasting 
to go and do this. Absolutely. And I said, yep, we shared a family called and we left, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars a year to come and do this um, and make a lot less. <laughs> But we, we also feel extremely lucky to have our kids here. Um, we, you know, we have, we're, we're raising three wonderful kids, well, three semi-wonderful kids, depends on what kind of day it is. Uh, we're, we're raising three wonderful kids here on the ranch. They, they have the experience to grow up, you know, in, a, in amazing ways. And there's no way that we could ever pay anybody back for that. No, and I like, I love donating. Um, and if we have extra meat at the end of the year too, um, you know, chuck roast, I always seem to have excess of uh you know we take that to the council of community services too you know we have food we're not a food insecure family at all um, because we can raise a lot of our own food and there's no reason why we can't share the harvest so exactly we got a super chat five dollar super chat <laughs> enjoy a beer on me if you're able to get into town um been watching actually i haven't since... been to a bar in so many years um but hey, sleepy three five seven five eight thank you so so much yes. we super super appreciate that yeah, i have been watching you guys since day one that is crazy that is a there's lot a few there's a few of those that that somebody says hey i've been watching you since the very first day and and people that stuck with us that long i mean you're just as dedicated as we are at this yes. point i mean so, thank you so much very much um I told I lost what I was doing. Oh, uh, the vegetable reseller, uh, Les Ry Ribby, Ribby. Um, Aaron, do you allow vegetable resellers in, resellers in your market? No, we you don't. You could do a whole live chat about farmers oh, market. You know that. So many things. <laughs> um, um, no, we don't allow vegetable resellers, um, with exceptions. Um, everything's complicated with farmers market. There's no like black and white. Um, there's federal regulations, there's state regulations, and then there's market regulations. Um, so yeah, vegetable reselling totally legal. Um, we do not allow totally it illegal? totally legal to well, it's totally legal yeah, to you do. can okay. resell farmer you can resell produce um, we do not allow it except for things like we allow Colorado peaches to come in every year um, we have a, a produce seller that she grows her own but she also purchases um, Palisade peaches from Colorado um, she can resell those we can't really grow we can kind of grow peaches here um, and then also Montana flathead cherries will come in um, we can't again growing cherries is not that it can't be done but difficult and people love those things you see roadside stands from all all over the place mm -hmm. we allow them to come into market because they bring people into market it's a benefit to market um i also so nicole who is my good friend that grows over in spearfish she has a corn maze i don't grow winter squash because i don't have enough space for it to grow the volume that we need for market she has her corn maze that opens like right after labor day she can't come to market anymore she grows winter squash i buy winter squash from her but she is a you know she's a, a vegetable produce person that we allow to come to market so we allow me to resell. I do have to have licensing through the state of Wyoming. I have to have a distributor license to resell produce. Right. So we allow reselling only in very specific instances. You know what I love about Aaron is you can ask a question. You're going to get an answer, man. You're going to get that answer and you're going to take it. Um, <laughs> it's very, the farmer's market. <laughs> so since I, I market manage and stuff and, and the, the food laws and the, the federal regulations, state regulations, and then our market rules, Oh my gosh, it is. It is. You wouldn't think there's that much involved in, you know, you think about just go, you go to farmer's market, you sell some vegetables, but there's tons it's of laws super. that you have to deal with. I mean, if you get, you know, if you get somebody sick, you know, how do you deal with that? I mean, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's like, you know, it's like a rolling grocery store, but yeah. you know, and everything, you know, like our meat has to be inspected, you know, things like that. But there's so many other little things like to even taking eggs to market, um, you know, eggs have to be kept at a certain temperature and that's all federal stuff. I yeah. Mean, and there's federal, the hard thing is, is Wyoming has the Wyoming Food Freedom Act, which allows for the, the direct sale from um, producer to informed end consumer of unregulated inspected items so like i can make ice cream in my home kitchen without inspection that can be sold but then like vegetables and eggs and meats fall under federal and then there's certain things that our market doesn't allow either even though it's it can be done so exactly. it's it's super complicated we got more super chats though. super thank <laughs> super big thank you to jimmy's landscaping um for a ten dollar super chat that's and really cool a question. and matt perry five dollar super chat and uh just uh thanks guys really do appreciate it you know it's just uh it just blows us away. So, thank you guys. Um, what other YouTubers do we watch? That, that was a question that we had a little ways back, and I love that question because we watch people that you wouldn't think that we probably watch. 
Um, like I mentioned it earlier, Casey Neistat, I watch Casey all the time. Um, Casey has a channel where he does a little bit of everything. Um, he reviews uh, different camera equipment. He reviews drones and things like that. Um, but also he's, he's very much sharing his life and he's got a very good message. And, and he talks about the like backside of YouTube a lot. He does. Yeah. He's, he's kind of got, he's, you know, he's got what, five or 6 million subscribers or something. So something. he's got it. He's got an in obviously. So, um, he, uh, he's, he's got some good information. I love watching his channel. So I watch, um, um, Mike met Tim Schmoyer at a conference. I watch movies, their family blog. Mm -hmm. We watch video creators, Tim's how to YouTube channel. Right. I watched a ton of makeup tutorials today. I that was up with that. That was weird. I, every time I come in the house, it's like there's makeup things going on. <laughs> Very fancy makeup. It was I, it was fun. Um, the kids watch Blippi and Jay House. Mackenzie's dream in life is to meet Jay House. <laughs> yeah, she loves that. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of YouTube floating around, and, and you know, you, you even even for us, it's kind of hard because the kids watch YouTube a lot. And, you know, we get into this point where it's like, you know, we have to take away the iPads and take away YouTube. And then it's like, well, I have well, to we go, go, make I have to go yeah, we're going to go make a video while we take away your YouTube. So. We also watch um, Guy in Wyoming, of course. Yeah, we watch Blake. Um, we, wa we watch, uh, yeah, Humphrey Family Holsteins. Um, you know, it, it, I don't watch a whole lot of agricultural type stuff. Aaron kind of keeps up on that more for me um, than, than a lot of it. Um, you watch those guys. Though. I watch those guys, but I, you know, I, I watch how farms how work. How farms work. Aaron watches. Uh, so yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of different stuff out there. Who is Jay House? Jay House is a family vlog. And you don't uh, have kids. That if you don't so. have kids, you don't know who they are. Um, <laughs> they're a family vlog. I think they're from Missouri, I think Kansas City. Kansas City, and uh, they they do kids stuff. They have a lot of kids. Hey and, Blake, we mentioned you. We're just like Blake. Come on, man. That's that's Blake's slow internet connection. <laughs> don't worry about it, Blake. You'll figure it out in about five minutes. Um, uh, and Lincoln loves Blippy, which again, if you don't have kids, yeah, Blippy, yeah, fun. yeah, Blippy can be fun. Um, <laughs> I actually talked to him on the phone; really nice guy. So, um, do you guys plan on selling on Amazon or making a website? We do have a website; it's www.ourwyomingwife.com. <laughs> uh, and we also sell T-shirts and stuff on Amazon. When we do our beef jerky, we are going to look into into doing it on Amazon. I'm not sure how receptive they're going to be on that. Um, we'll probably just determine. We'll, we are going to have limited supply of jerky. We only yeah. kept back so many steers. If we're going to expand the jerky business, we're unfortunately two years out. We already have, you know, we kept back calves this fall to fatten mm -hmm. for next spring. So yeah, it's a, it's to amp up our meat production. It's two years. Right. So probably we'll just sell it on our website. It's going to be super limited because um, tons of you guys have asked for it. Um, I imagine it's going to go, demand is going to go fast and we're going to be like Keebler elves packaging in the basement because we're going to package it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yep. We're going to con our friends into helping us package Exactly. It. We're going to have packaging parties. <laughs> Blake, you're invited. We're going to package <laughs> all night long. Um, low nice. cattle, low stress cattle handling techniques. Hey. We practice those all the time. We got another uh, super chat. Ming Nun Nunjin. I probably messed that all so up. So sorry. <laughs> uh, I love your channel and everything you do. Keep up the good work. So thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for the $5. Thank you That's very much. That's so awesome. Uh, uh, John Pate, we, uh, I've actually met him uh, a couple times. He's a really cool guy. He did a thing here at the Camplex one time. Um, low stress I don't cattle. Even know where you're at. Low stress cattle oh, handling. Yeah. And that's definitely something we've always tried to practice. And when it's low stress on the cows, it's also low stress on you. Even um, with the pigs, like you guys, I mean, like we're just kind of standing around a lot or like, you know, I yeah. bribe them with a the pumpkin, Mike bribe them with a the pumpkin. You know, I mean, we did have to physically kind of push a couple of them in the trail. The first three went great, but you know, it was very, try and be super gentle yeah, as I much mean, as possible. You can fight with an animal all day long and all they're going to do is fight with you. I did so. kind of have a freak out towards the end of the pigs. But you did. All the cameras died. They did. All of our cameras died. It was cold <laughs> enough. So, yeah. Oh, talk about the drone because you got asked. Oh, yeah. I did get asked about the drone. Uh, somebody asked why we're not doing that many drone shots here lately um, in our videos. And that is because our drone does not fly when it is cold out. And um, it has been cold. The has, last few days have been warmer. Yeah. But it's been cold. It, phys it physically will not fly. It has a sensor in it that will it basically, it's a, it's a safety feature that says, you know, if you, if it's this cold, your battery is going to drain this fast. And if you take it up, you're going to crash. And so it won't even go off. It won't even come off the ground unless it's like above freezing. And it's been like windy too. <laughs> yeah. Wind doesn't help. So min wind. That, oh, that's how you produce. Min win. There you go. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, any babies yet, Aaron? 
Well, I'm not expecting, so no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have uh, we have heifers that are about ready to pop at any minute. Um, I was just out checking them not uh, well before we before it got dark, and uh, they're getting really close, and so they're they're getting baby pretty well and keeping an eye on them. You know, soon we're a couple right weeks. Now. We're technically a couple weeks out from the first due date. That doesn't mean we couldn't have one tomorrow. If you like us on Facebook or Instagram, I promise, as soon as we get a baby on the ranch, baby calf on the ranch, it'll go up on Facebook and it'll Instagram. It'll be right there. So, so um, somebody else asked how we ended up on the ranch. We can give them the quick story, can't we? Um, Super uh, If you watched the video called Our Story, it was our second video posted last February. Mm -hmm. It'll explain it. It does detail. explain it all. But the long story is that we worked at radio for years and years and years. Aaron's stepdad got sick. We came back. Um, to help out, and he passed away in 2012, and now here we are. So, Gary's um, there. Oh, do no. you raise turkeys for Thanksgiving? No, but I want to. She does want to. Maybe not this year, but maybe next year. Yeah, I want a plucker before we go into the turkey business. Yeah. And we <laughs> look, nice they are plucker. expensive. Holy smokes, yeah. those things are expensive. I want like the wash to throw it in. Thirty seconds later, you get a pluck. That'd be nice. Turkey. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we need equipment. Do you have bears in the area? No. <laughs> Not here. Um, up north of town, they do get bears occasionally. There was when we had the, the other ranches, like we were talking about earlier in the live stream. Um, one of them was 30 miles from here, 30 miles north of here. And I was heading up. It was actually during haying. We had a bunch of hay ground up there, so I was haying in both places and uh, went up there. And here's a bear running across the hay field. And I just kind of yeah, I mean, shocked me. But Here we have deer, antelope. Fox, coyotes, badgers, badgers um, bobcats, occasionally, occasionally uh, elk will wander through. Elk will wander through occasionally. Mountain, mountain lion, lions. mountain lion will wander through. We had a mountain lion come through a few days ago. Not on us. Not on us. It was, it was actually on the neighbors. Um, okay, so let's do this one. We're uh, it's uh, seven fifty six, so we're coming in on this now. This package was the hour goes so fast. It does go so fast. This package right here was sent to us um, from. Um, uh, Levi Strauss and company. So they they had sent me an email and they asked me what size jeans I wear. And I'm sure that somebody noticed that I wore Wranglers about 100% of the time. It's like so all you know is Wranglers. It is all I know. So somebody Don't cut your leg off there. at Levi decided that I should probably try. I'll answer your question real quick while you do that. Well, uh, yeah. Fryer livestock. Has there ever been such a hectic time when you said, hold off on filming to take care of business? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we're so busy to not film. Yeah, um, we're usually like one man filming crew. Um, yeah, Mike does help me like when I do the kitchen stuff. Mike helps me a lot. I don't help him a lot. But the summer, even, you know, even when I was working in the garden, it was super hectic sometimes and hard to. It's, it's not just filming, but it's also coming up with a story and an episode and, and narration and stuff. So, yeah, there was plenty of times I failed horribly last summer in the gardens. Um, and But, like, when Mike's calving and stuff, you know, if we're in an emergency situation with a cow, we're not going to set up a tripod, unfortunately for it you guys. It is tough, yeah. I mean, there's been many times that I've thought about, you know, if I had a lackey to just follow me around with a camera, my life would be so much easier. Um, we have kids, but they're they're going to get distracted, and they're going to be like, oh, look at the pretty bird. And, you know. Well, and they, like, wave the camera. They do. Lincoln <laughs> ran the camera for me a while, for a while. Hey, man, he was everywhere. Um, but so, yeah, doing the camera thing, sometimes there's there's been lots of stuff. Um, last fall, we ended up having a cow that had a calf um, that went down, and she couldn't get back up. Um, she was laying uphill mm -hmm. and so I had to roll her over. I didn't, I didn't get any of that on film. And we really try to like always keep a camera with us. We always have our phones with, but do you have a tripod? Do you have the right accessory to clip something onto? We struggle with it. Yeah, it's We tough. always try and I think we're a lot better than we were in the beginning. So I think this calving season, this gardening season, um, hopefully we'll get to see a lot more. So, yeah. hey, so show us so, yeah, so, and then yeah, we'll do we the super right. chat. I saw the super chat. We'll do that. Uh, Bailey, we'll do it really quick. Okay. It's going to go off the screen. Bailey Kearns, five dollars. Do you, does your processor do processed jerky? This is something else you could do. Um, yeah, we're getting jerky. We're getting beef jerky. We're not doing pork jerky. I know pork jerky is becoming super popular. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have beef jerky for sale on our website as soon as we get it back. It's we're like six weeks out from jerky. Um, original peppered and teriyaki. Yep, exactly. So yeah, we were right. Levi did uh, did send me jeans, um, which 
you know, I'll wear because they're free. So <laughs> thank uh, you, Levi. Thank that's you, Levi, super awesome. for jeans. So that's the that, so that you know, if you if you have something you'd like to have opened on a live stream, we're going to try to do this every live stream, and you can uh, just feel free to send us a letter or a postcard, it. whatever you want to, and uh, and we'll open it up on the live stream and uh, and give you some props. So thank you. Yeah, very much. It's thank you guys for PO all. Box six six seven Gillette Wyoming eight two seven one seven. Yeah. Seven. You're gonna learn that. I'm gonna learn that eventually. Eight two seven one seven. So, uh, oh yeah, dress jeans. Totally. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Nice these jeans. could be the nice jeans. You're right. Yeah. Don't get poop on them. I will, guarantee. <laughs> um, the cake trailer, yeah, the cake feeder trailer, is actually working really good. Um, it's uh, it's been attached oh and figured gosh. out. So. We've got that pretty much down, so settle down. You're okay. Um, is DeWalt giving you any love? Uh, I actually talked to somebody from DeWalt. There is a DeWalt um, factory or something or other in Billings, and I talked to a guy from up there. Obviously, they're not giving me any love, but I did talk to him, and he, he did say that they can repair stuff for me, so that's awesome. I didn't even know he was might there, give so. us some love. You never know. But. We have another super chat. Oh, my gosh, and another one. Okay. <laughs> Jeremy Gunnels, uh, $19.99. I really, it's kind of a weird number, um, but uh, I hope that Thank wasn't you. like the last amount in your checking account or something. Um, that would have been like 1932. 1932, <laughs> yeah. No, thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. And, uh, thank you, Jeremy. And, and uh, I did it again. Min, 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 win. min, 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 win. min, win, min, win. Another $5. Well, awesome. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you guys so much tonight. This has been an amazing live chat. Live stream. Live stream. Live stream, live chat. chat. Yeah. Whatever. So, uh, beef sticks. Are you going to do beef sticks? No, we're going to do like jerky. Real jerky. jerky. Yeah. Not the flat beef sticks. Like real chew on it. It's jerky. <laughs> chew, on the, <laughs> chew on the jerky. I want it to be substantial. I want you to really enjoy that piece of jerky. Yeah, exactly. Now, if John Deere, this is from Ryan, if John Deere sees your channel, you can get some free heavy equipment. If they... If they do, Please. we will bring it in we the will. damn living room here and we'll show it on the live stream. We will unbox a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, we're going to unbox a high tunnel. Not from, you know. It comes in like 40 different boxes. They but there's still boxes. They oh didn't give gosh. it to us. We are actually going to do with the live. Farm tech, if you want to give me some greenhouses, we will build them. <laughs> yeah, we will build them. Um, one thing that we are going to do with the high tunnel this year is when we do build it, we are going to have a high tunnel series about building that high tunnel. It's just going to be specifically about building the high tunnel. And that will be um, kind of interesting because when we built our first high tunnel, so there was nothing. We searched everywhere for any type of help in building the darn thing and we couldn't find it. No, and it's been several years. So it there might be more years. YouTube videos out there. We built it in 2014. Um, it's, you guys will see, it's, and, and I mean, if you look, we haven't really showed the construction of our high tunnel. It's like the most simple structure, but it is, so confusing when the first time you build one now it like it'll be so much easier for us right. but we are making some changes to how it is constructed because of our wind situation and just more experience and if if the changes and we'll show you guys all of this if the changes work out through this summer i think next fall we'll re or this coming fall we'll re-plastic the existing high tunnel because it needs new plastic anyhow and we have a new new idea for how to make the plastic work better for us with yeah. our wind situation. And so. I think that it'll help people because, you know, so if somebody else is building a high tunnel, they can watch our channel and, and learn how to build it. So um, any more hogs this year? Yes, we are going to be getting more of our pigs from our gal in Nebraska. June or July, whenever she... June or July. Sometimes August. So, yeah. yeah. Um, how many apples do you get off your orchard? Um, well, there was three apples last year that were this big. Um, <laughs> the trees are young still. Um, I think they're three years old. No, they're older than that. They're pretty got to be older than that, yeah. Um, we should have production in two to three years. So if they all live the winter, you know, we'll have had them on the ranch for a year. So I think this fall we might have a few apples. Um, they are standard size trees, which is potentially a lot of apples. Like that could be, yeah. We figured I four think... to eight hundred pounds per tree is what they'll produce when they're in full production if they're pruned for production. So, um, yeah, the apples were like. They're Tiny. bite sized. Um, and I think the deer knocked them off because we didn't have a fence. So we didn't get to eat an apple, but I did. They did bloom last spring. I'm super excited to see them bloom because they, when we got them, the blossoms were done and they'd been transported and everything. So you could tell that they had bloomed, but I'm excited to see them bloom. 
I guess I don't really get off on that. I, mean, I they're, do. They're, whatever. I guess um, I'd rather see a calf being born, but that's probably a little bit more disgusting like... than seeing a pretty flower. I like seeing I yeah. like seeing blood and afterbirth stuff flying around, and you're you're like these pretty little flowers. Um, Humphrey playing with Holsteins. What kind of apple? Um, Harlesons and Honeycrisp. Five of each. More super chance. <laughs> yeah, this is, we just stay here all night, I guess. I actually read a thing online about a guy that was doing a, a live stream. I can't remember the guy's name, and somebody probably knows this. He was doing a live stream to raise money for something. Mm -hmm. And he did live stream for, like, days. Until he raised all the money. Until he raised all the money. Insane. Um, yeah, what now? Another $2. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and also, Jeremy Gunnels, uh, your advice about asking how many acres and how many head of castle cattle makes totally sense. Not completely obvious. Thank you for the advice. Do you want to backstory that? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, we so um, we get asked all the time how many acres, how many cows we have, and that's fine because we've opened ourselves up to it. Um, in some parts of the country, and we learned this. It's perfectly okay. It's totally fine here in Wyoming. Um, when we were first ranchers, you got told not to do that. I got, uh, yeah, I almost got punched. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just it, it it's it's a different. I think a lot of it has to do with the area that you're in, you know, the type of people that you're around, um, whether they're more open to that type of thing. Um, you know, I, I would ask, you know, how many acres you got? And people would just stare at me like I, you know, farted in church. Um, so, yeah, and so in some parts of the country, it's viewed upon as being rude, essentially. It um, if you're If you're in any kind of agriculture, all of your, your wealth essentially is tied up in your land and your animals and stuff. And... Um, you know, sometimes you just want to keep that private. So yeah. in some parts of the country, it's not, it's frowned upon to ask. Other parts of the country, we found out since talking about it, that it's perfectly Yeah, acceptable. and that's, so, that's, that's why, that's another reason we do that. We talk about, you know, educating people and, and, and you know, and bringing agri agriculture into people's homes and stuff like that. But we get educated almost every single day okay. on something. So, you know, people, when we say, you know, here, this is what this is here. You could have a completely different situation, and I totally understand that, and that is awesome because I would love to have a neighbor that I could have went to. You know, eventually I did kind of find those neighbors after we had been here for a while. But when I when we first came here, um, you know, Gilbert wasn't the best teacher in the world, and our neighbors were kind of shut off, and it was it was really hard to find that information. You can read a book, but a book doesn't tell you what's happening in Northeast Wyoming on Thursday. You know, and YouTube wasn't part of our lives then. It wasn't. We didn't watch wasn't. YouTube videos then. So thank you. Well, it's it's eight oh seven. It's eight oh seven. Let's run through a couple more questions. Okay. And then we'll uh, go. There was one that I wanted to answer actually and I don't remember where it went. Um well anyway. <laughs> So yeah, um, we are just around the corner from 20,000 subscribers. Any any help that you guys feed us in getting there is awesome. If you like us on Facebook, share that junk, you know, and let's get <laughs> Share something. our video. Yeah, yeah do I any. Mean, we, if we hit that 20,000 mark. One cool thing that happened today is actually we got an email um, from somebody at YouTube um, that's interested in what we're doing, which is the first time that has happened. Yeah, we're big enough now that YouTube is, might throw a little help our way. They could. You never Yay. know. I mean, I, we you, never, you know, the, the email, <laughs> and I, I actually, I don't have my phone on me, but uh, the email said uh, the, the, the subject was line was basically your response is needed. And uh, they said they had tried calling, which I didn't, I didn't catch the call. But Maybe your phone number's wrong. It could be. I don't know. Yeah. So um, it's kind of cool that that, that kind of stuff is happening. The Peacock story is out there. Um, we actually... Good stuff uh, might there's be the happening. Good things might be happening with that. The peacock story's out there, and um, it's it's one of those you know very nice touchy feely type stories that people lead up. So um, that could be something. And we appreciate all you guys being here. Um, you know, from the first video or since uh, since Hayden. Hayden's been here since five thousand, yeah. and uh, you know that kind of stuff. It's it's amazing to us that we put so much into this, but so do you guys. Yeah. You know, you guys are right here with us on a Thursday night when you could you could be doing anything. anything. And so could we, obviously. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really cool on how you keep um, com still, coming back. It still you know? blows me away. Like, we, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happened like twice this week when people, random people that we encountered in our daily lives said, hey, we love your videos, and people that we've never met before. Um, and that is just amazing to me. So, and we don't, we've done some local press, but not a ton of people know about us here locally. So it, mm -hmm. it's really amazing when we get those comments. And when you guys comment and you, you know, you say we've been here for a long time or we, we love what you guys are doing, keep it up like that is. That's awesome. It's awesome. Just people call us all or 
email us and say, me and my friends were talking about you. That blows my mind. <laughs> that I'm glad that we're making an impact and that you guys are enjoying watching with us that enough that you talk to your, oh, somebody sent us a video of their whole family watching us on their TV. Like that, that was, was weird. Crazy. That was weird. Um, <laughs> so it, it, we love that you guys are enjoying this journey with us and that you, that you guys share it with the people in your life. So thank you, thank you, thank you for yes, that. exactly. I've seen this question pop up a few times. I'll hit it really quick. The Moo call, um, if I have an opportunity to use the Moo call, I will. Uh, it's if I, you know, if I have a cow in the barn or I have a, a cow right there in the stall, we'll be able to use yeah, it Yeah, hopefully with those heifers because they're close and if one's in labor, it, heifers can be in labor for days. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we definitely might try and put it on some heifers. Um, Bambi, our pet cow, will probably be willing to use the Moocall again. She loves it. Yeah. It gives her an excuse to, to, to hang yeah. out right here with us. So She hangs out in the barn. She wanted in the barn the other day. She did. She wanted in the barn. <laughs> weird cow. Very weird cow. Um, the Blue Line t-shirt, I do appreciate everybody that that, uh, that supports the, the, the Thin Blue Line. Um, I'm actually looking for another one. I want to find a, a different one. Um, there's a there's a few different designs out there, but uh, I, I think that it's an important thing. And I think, that, you know, speaking of which, um, we do have our moderators here with us, Ron and Blake are here. Matt, you may uh, recognize, is gone. Matt is actually feeling a little bit underneath the weather. So if everybody can send him a little bit of love and uh, he's, pr he's probably watching. So uh, he's feeling underneath the weather and he decided that he couldn't uh, moderate tonight, which we totally understand. And but we would like him to feel better. So um, do you have anything else for tonight or? Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. I can't believe all the support tonight. That's amazing. That is that is really cool. So uh, hopefully by the time we do our next live stream, we'll be at 20000 I think we're going to try and do another giveaway at 25000 Yeah, and it, here's here's the hard thing about doing the giveaways is sometimes we go fast. So we have like, oh, crap, you know, we're going up faster, you know, so we got we to gotta put together giveaways pretty quick. So we need quick, to put together but... a giveaway. We need to get our poop in a group and put together a giveaway now. So when we hit 25, we are ready to go. Exactly. So... Hunting Pro really want, he said, please. What is your favorite tractor, Aaron? What's your favorite tractor? Do you have a favorite tractor? No. The tractor you usually run is a 6420. Um, which That's what we, I call the new tractor. The new tractor. Uh, <laughs> it's not is, really new, but. No, but that's our feeding tractor. That's the one we run every day. I like the it's tractor It's the easiest to use because you don't have to push the clutch. Yeah. It's I got, mean, you yeah, should. You should, but. Um, you you got told all, me I didn't have to. We've also, we also have the 4055, uh, which is a great tractor. We love using that one as well, too. So. Is that the farm tractor? That's the farm tractor. I've driven that like once. Yeah, that's a bigger tractor, but it. I don't uh, think I've ever driven the International. Really? I think I sat on it once. <laughs> <laughs> I like the lawnmowers. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't really drive a tractor. I can. You I can. used to help pay. Yeah, exactly. I might feed the cows one day. That'll be a fun video. I'll feed the cows. Mike can cook dinner. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and we'll have hot dogs. Hot dogs and. <laughs> Microwave hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yes. Thank you very much. So, any um, tractor that has heat, I, Ron, I usually drive the tractors in the, the summertime. So, any tractor that has air conditioning. <laughs> air conditioning is even better. Um, yeah. I'll take I'll take uh, air conditioning over heat any day if something's going to break. Yeah. You're out of the wind, at least, in the cab. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the Gator doesn't have heat, and I do just fine in that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. If you want to get in on the mail call deal, uh, you can send us something. Uh, we'll be sure to get it put up for you. Uh, like us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, Baby cows coming any time now. So, yeah. Make yeah. sure you get us on Facebook and Instagram. You'll see them there first. Do you know where Torrington is? Torrington is south of us. We get hate yes. from Torrington. So, anyway, <laughs> um, we could probably do this all night long. We really do appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, like I said, like us on Facebook, hit us up on Instagram. We're hitting that 20,000 mark, 25,000. We're going to have another giveaway and, uh, feel free to leave a comment, send us an email. We're always here for you guys. And, uh, we count on you guys being here for us. And that's more important than anything. Thank so you. have a great night and, uh, thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.